Welcome to another big train tour at the Colorado Railroad Museum. This month, we'll be taking a look at a locomotive built in 1880 for Colorado's famed South Park Line. Acquired by the museum in 1973, this unlikely survivor had spent much of the 20th century in Wisconsin. Restored to its latter-day Colorado appearance from the 1890s, Denver, Leadville, and Gunnison Railroad Locomotive Number 191 is a true Colorado pioneer. Today, the locomotive is proudly displayed at the museum here in Golden. Hi, I'm Paul Hammond, Executive Director of the Colorado Railroad Museum. Our subject today is the oldest steam locomotive known to exist in Colorado. For its first two decades, it worked on one of the state's most storied narrow-gauge railroad lines. Then it was sold off to a logging railroad in Wisconsin, where it remained in service until the early 1930s. Displayed at a logging museum following retirement, it eventually found its way back to Colorado some three decades later. Come join me now as we explore the history of this pioneering steam locomotive. Our subject locomotive was completed by the Baldwin Locomotive Works of Philadelphia in 1880 and delivered to the Denver, South Park and Pacific Railroad. It was the second of eight consolidation type locomotives ordered at that same time, featuring a two, eight, zero wheel arrangement. This means that it has two leading wheels to guide it along curved or uneven track, eight driving wheels, and no trailing wheels, thus placing most of the locomotive's weight on its drivers. These eight consolidations were the largest locomotives built for the railroad at that time. The South Park had started operations with a fleet of mostly Mason bogey locomotives, an unusual choice given this design employed a single long rigid frame for the locomotive and tender. Unfortunately, these stylish Mason engines turned out to be ill-suited for steep grades and sharp curves. So the railroad turned to more conventional locomotives. Numbered 51 at the time of delivery, our locomotive was one of the very first consolidations purchased by the South Park. Weighing in at nearly 62,000 pounds, its 37-inch driving wheels were designed to pull freight trains, providing a tractive effort rating of 13,900 pounds. These locomotives sported a large Congdon smokestack fashioned to trap hot cinders in an effort to prevent starting range and forest fires. Number 51 early on was equipped with power braking systems rather than solely with handbrakes, which was still a common practice on many American railroads. The steep grades and heavy trains of the South Park line were probably the main reasons. Even then, the railroad still had its share of accidents given the terrain and the still improving technologies that were being employed. The South Park first tried vacuum brakes on its trains. These did not work well at higher altitudes because of reduced atmospheric pressure, and they only lasted a few years in the early 1880s. The railroad then installed early versions of George Westinghouse's automatic air brake system, which employed fail-safe measures in case of a brake apart of the train. Lincoln pin couplers would remain standard on the South Park's freight trains until the turn of the 20th century. The South Park Line opened up the first rail routes to a large section of central Colorado's mining districts in the early decades of the mineral boom. Founded in 1872 by Colorado Territorial Governor John Evans, the Denver, South Park and Pacific, along with its competitor Denver and Rio Grande, was first to reach the mining boom town of Leadville in 1880. That same year, the South Park Line was purchased by the Union Pacific Railway, though it continued to be operated independently. In 1885, the line's locomotives were renumbered into Union Pacific's number system. Our locomotive, which had started out as number 51 on the railroad, was renumbered 191 at this point, but otherwise not much else changed outwardly. At its peak, 
the South Park Line had over 300 miles of narrow gauge track in operation. The line went bankrupt in 1889 and was reorganized as the Denver, Leadville, and Gunnison Railway. When the Union Pacific itself went bankrupt in 1893, the line once again went into receivership. It was eventually sold to the Colorado and Southern Railway, which a few years later was in turn acquired by the Burlington Route. The railroad took its name from the South Park region of Colorado's high country, which the line traversed. The railroad's main line headed south from Denver, then turned southwest and ascended the South Platte River Canyon to Kenosha Pass, where it then descended into South Park. At Como, the line forked. The main line headed southwest toward Buena Vista, then on to Gunnison via the famed Alpine Tunnel crossing of the Continental Divide at an elevation of over 11,500 feet. Colorado Highway 285 follows much of this line today. The railroad's other route turned north out of Como, traversing the Continental Divide by a Boreas Pass into Breckenridge, then continuing on to Frisco and Dillon, then turning west and south and crossing the Continental Divide a second time in order to reach Leadville. The railroad was forced to build via this difficult route into Leadville after the Denver and Rio Grande in 1884 canceled an agreement to share the use of its line between Buena Vista and Leadville. Today's Colorado, Leadville and Southern Tourist Railroad runs over a portion of this line. The railroad's routes were rugged and challenging, with winter snows and the occasional avalanche posing major obstacles. Wedge-style snowplows were prone to getting stuck in deep drifts, so the South Park was an early purchaser of steam-powered rotary snowplows beginning in 1889. The line's fortunes were directly related to the success of gold and silver mining in the districts that it served. Following the Silver Panic of 1893, traffic declined. By 1899, new owner Colorado and Southern had larger narrow gauge locomotives than the 191, and there was less traffic to move as compared with the previous decades. Number 191 was slated to be renumbered for the Colorado and Southern, but this never happened. The locomotive and its seven classmates became surplus to the railroad, and number 191 was sold off. By 1902, all but one of the South Park's original consolidation locomotives had been disposed of. Our locomotive was fortunate, heading to northern Wisconsin for the second chapter in its life. The Edward Hines Lumber Company was in the process of purchasing a competitor along with its wholly owned Washburn and Northwestern Railroad. This short logging railroad operated out of Washburn, Wisconsin, located near the southern end of Lake Superior and close by Ashland. Renumbered seven, the former South Park locomotive spent the next several years pulling heavy trains loaded with logs to the waterfront mill in Washburn. When this operation was abandoned in 1905, having cut down all of the available timber, locomotive number seven was sold again. It traveled 100 miles southeast to the Robbins Lumber Company of Rhinelander, located on the banks of the Wisconsin River. This town boasted several nearby logging railroads, but our locomotive would end up on perhaps the most significant one. The locomotive retained its number seven and began hauling log trains on the Robbins Railroad, a common carrier narrow gauge railroad wholly owned by the lumber company. Up until 1917, this railroad carried not only logs for Robbins, but also large amounts of logs for the Brown Brothers Lumber Company, also located in Rhinelander. In 1919, Robbins was bought out by the Thunder Lake Lumber Company, and number seven went along with the sale. Thunder Lake abandoned the existing Robbins Railroad mainline to Pine Lake and extended the railroad in a northeasterly direction toward Three Lakes. By 1938, the main line of the Robbins Railroad was some 48 miles in length. Final logging took place in the spring of 1941 when the railroad was abandoned. Interestingly, the Robbins Railroad was the last narrow gauge railroad to operate in Wisconsin and the last narrow gauge common carrier railroad in the entire Midwest. 
Locomotive number no. seven didn't quite make it to the very end of the Robbins Railroad, however. In 1932, the locomotive was placed on exhibit at the Rhinelander Logging Museum, located next to the town's paper mill and intended to help stimulate tourism during the depths of the Depression. Later relocated to Rhinelander's Pioneer Park, the locomotive continued to be a central feature of the logging museum into the early 1970s. However, a third chapter was about to come into play in the life of this pioneering locomotive. Sometime around 1970, Colorado Railroad Museum co-founder Cornelius Hauck became aware of number seven. He got in contact with officials in Rhinelander and began negotiations to acquire the locomotive. Hauk found that if he could locate a suitable replacement, his offer would be considered. He was able to find an especially appropriate locomotive, one that had been built for the Thunder Lake Lumber Company back in 1925. This former Thunder Lake locomotive, number five, had been sold off after the railroad's abandonment and was now located in northern Mexico near Chihuahua. This meant that it had to be purchased, loaded onto a flatbed trailer, and transported to Rhinelander. How completed the negotiations and purchase details, and museum founder Bob Richardson took on the task of overseeing loading and moving. As a lover of Mexican food, Bob apparently enjoyed this little side adventure. With its replacement safely moved from Mexico to the Logging Museum in Wisconsin, the former South Park Line locomotive could now head for Colorado. In Golden, this 1880 pioneer gained a new honor, becoming the oldest existing steam locomotive in the Centennial State. Its tender wasn't the original, that had been replaced at some point, but it was similar. This replacement tender still sported the same trucks or wheel sets that had traveled to Wisconsin back at the turn of the 20th century. The locomotive at the museum was relettered to Denver, Leadville and Gunnison number 191, and its smokestack was replaced with a replica of the large Congdon design it sported early on. A Union Pacific design oil headlight and a wooden pilot or cowcatcher were also added to help with the backdating of the engine. In 2009, the locomotive was moved into the museum's Cornelius Hauk Roundhouse Restoration Facility and a more thorough overhaul was performed. Restoration to operating condition was not feasible, but the locomotive would become much more outwardly authentic. The wooden cab was refurbished, a new wooden pilot was installed, and a proper boiler jacket along with new paint and lettering were applied to return the locomotive to its circa 1889 appearance. Colorado's oldest steam locomotive once again looked the part. Today, Denver, Leadville and Gunnison locomotive number 191 is listed on the Colorado Register of Historic Places and is usually posed near the museum's train ride boarding platform adjacent to the Robert Richardson Library facility. This eye-catching narrow-gauge locomotive remains a wonderful example of a Colorado railroading icon that has served a long and interesting life both inside and outside the Centennial State. Thanks for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed our tour of Denver, Leadville and Gunnison Steam Locomotive Number no. 191. I also hope that your appreciation for Colorado's rich railroad heritage continues to grow with each and every tour of the museum's collections. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Commenting and sharing in particular may qualify as virtual engagements for important funding programs like the SCFD.